Hello and welcome again to Bruno Latour in 12 Easy Pieces. Uh, in this third episode, I'm going to talk about a book of mine that you almost all know, or at least have heard of. I'm uh, referring here to the study Laboratory Life, which I published in 1979 uh, together uh, with the British uh, sociologist Steve Woolgar. He proved to be a rather uh, groundbreaking contribution to the then emerging field of science and technology studies. Uh, what's the book about? Well, uh, the basic argument is not the, really an argument, but a particular method. Uh, laboratory life illustrates how insightful and uh, stimulating an ethnographic or anthropological approach to scientific practice can be. Uh, what we suggest uh, then is to put an end to the classical sociology of science, which was interested in social interests, <clears throat> the circulation of money, and uh, concrete individuals and groups, but also uh, to put an end um, to any philosophy of science that only wants to deal with its subject in theoretical ways. What we offer instead is an empirical look at the everyday life of laboratory workers, so to speak. Uh, so, what do scientists actually do and how are scientific facts socially produced or rather uh, constructed, as the subtitle of the book puts it? Now, the um, specific example we are referring to is the research laboratory that the French biochemist Roger Guillaumin has been running at the Salk Institute for Biological Research since 1970. Um, this is the very institute in La Jolla, in California, that was built by the famous architect uh, Louis Kahn is a spectacular building right by the sea. And, yes, for his work in neuroendocrinology, Guillaume received the Nobel Prize in medicine in 1977. Um, I was there slightly earlier. The anthropological field work in his lab was carried out between October 1975 and August 1977. I then returned to Europe uh, where I wrote the book uh, together with uh, Steve, uh, Steve Wulgar. Mm. Now, you may be wondering why I'm now suddenly an anthropologist when I'm actually a philosopher. Uh, the reason is simple. I had done my civilian service in Africa, in Abidjan, shortly before, and written a sociological study there based on a small survey among students. Uh, since then, I could claim to be not only a philosopher, but also a sociologist or an anthropologist. Um, I also happen to know Guillaume in person, uh, having met him in Dijon, his family was also active in the wine trade, as my family, as you know. As a result, it wasn't that difficult to get a grant to develop an anthropology of the laboratory in California. So, uh, back to uh, laboratory life. Two things impressed me during my stay in Guillemin's uh, lab. Uh, firstly, that the... Uh, scientists argue all the time. They are surrounded by allies in their work, but they also face enemies with whom they have to fight. They um, 
seek uh, support from outside, on the one hand, through meetings with other scientists, conferences and congresses, but also through stocks of research material and literature, as well as new weapons, new instruments and new strategies. Um, it feels really uh, like being at war, if you do science, in the lab. With the sociologist Pierre Bourdieu, I have described this as the agonistic dimension of scientific uh, practice. Secondly, I noticed that the laboratory uh, scientists spend an incredible amount of time reading and writing. Uh, that was the biggest surprise. When I came to the lab, I expected them to be constantly handling living beings and operating instruments like in, instruments like microscope for example um, in fact they spend a lot of time at their desks reading publications sorting out data and writing their papers um, laboratory life is therefore mainly and primarily the continuous work on and with texts through which different types of statements are transformed into states of fact, if all goes well, into new facts, new truths. Uh, so in this sense, we write, for example, in the book I quote, the work of the laboratory can be understood in terms of the continual uh, generation of a variety of documents which are used uh, to effect the transformation of statement types and so enhance or detract from their fat-like status. Yeah. Uh, there is a reason for the focus that Steve and I uh, uh, put on desks and writing activities. Being the young scholars that we were, he and I obviously paid attention to what was going on in the social sciences and the humanities at that time. Um, the fashion was linguistics and semiotics in general, but also Jacques Derrida and his grammatology, as well as postmodern philosophy and literary theory. Now, that's why we talked a lot about writing and inscription, for example, and we were interested in how Guillermo and his colleagues actually recorded the phenomena they observed on paper. Uh, they weren't working so much with computers at the time. Um, of course, my earlier interest in the question of exegesis, uh, which was influenced by uh, philosophy and theology, was also behind this. In fact, I saw the scientists in the lab as a strange kind of community in a special kind of church. So the wonderful building by Louis Kahn and following a very special form of faith, namely the faith in scientific truth. But in the book we put a slightly different, more contemporary emphasis. We draw a parallel with literature. In fact, at the end of Laboratory Life, it says that with this book we want to make a first tentative step towards making clear the link between science and literature. Of course, taking this step had little to do with uh, sociology. At this point, we already started to think about actors and the stages on or networks in which they performed, in other words, about theater, perhaps even puppets. Uh, be this as it may, our turn to literature uh, did not prevent the book from being successful. I would also, or, uh, almost say to the contrary. Although it didn't actually have any training as a social scientist, it was, and still is, considered a groundbreaking work for science and technology studies. And, I should add, to conclude, it still remains an excellent introduction to my work. Uh, that was the third easy piece. 
Thanks for watching and looking forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.